guys welcome back to my channel hope you're having a great day and a great week today's topic is going to be movement of water and minerals up the plant so i will be giving you guys some important information about this topic so do watch till the end and let's just get right onto it so the first thing you need to know is the two types of plants there are two types of plants namely vascular plants and non-vascular plants Vascular plants are the types of plants that have transportation systems in them. So these plants are able to actually transport water and minerals as well as food uh, to other parts of the plant. Non-vascular plants do not have any transportation system. So they rely on other modes to transport food and other water or minerals to the other parts of the plant. There are three types of roots as well. There is a tap root fibrous root and adventitious root tap root has a central main root and after that uh, branching from this central root you have multiple smaller uh, roots which are basically lateral roots so the tap root has a central root with lateral roots growing at an acute angle they grow at an acute angle and they have a central root Fibrous root is just a network of roots. So basically it's just like this net of roots. This does not have a main root. It has no main root. Adventitious roots are those roots that grow underground. So basically if we uh, talk about a rhizome for example. A rhizome has a structure of an underground stem that has roots growing from it. So this stem is a growing underground but it grows horizontally and it has roots growing from it laterally. So in this case adventitious roots are the roots that grow directly from the stem underground in a horizontal manner. Now the main part of this chapter is how water and mineral salts pass from the roots to the xylem. So let's see how it passes on from the roots to the xylem. In this case, soil water is more dilute, as in soil water is having more water compared to the cell sap of the actual plant cell. So, soil water is dilute and is less concentrated compared to the cell sap of the plant cells. Hence, water moves into the cell by endosmosis. So, let's say this is your soil. Over here, there is more water than the cell sap. So now water moves from the soil into the cell via endosmosis and that makes the cell very turgid or swelled up. So when water moves into the cell from the soil, the cell swells up due to which the water exerts a sort of pressure on the sides of the cell. The water exerts a pressure on the side of the cell that allows it to push against the cell walls and move into other cells. So let's repeat that. When water from the cell uh, basically pushes onto the sides of the cell or the cell wall, it makes the cell swell up, forcing water into other cells. Tertiary pressure forces water through the cell walls into other cells, allowing it to pass from other cells into the xylem. The xylem transports water and mineral salts only in the upward direction and this is because of the transpirational pull. Right, movement of water in the xylem. Now remember, water and mineral salts only move in the upward direction in the xylem because of transpirational pull. So as we saw before, we have uh, this sort of structure over here, that is the xylem, right? So this allows water to only move in upward direction because of transpirational pull. So this is because of two things, cohesion and adhesion. Attractive forces between water molecules that make them stick together is called cohesion. So, right. So, in this case, you have two water molecules over here and you have a bond over here. You have a covalent bond over here. This bond in between the both water molecules allow it to stick together and when it sticks together it forms a thread of water molecules it forms like a chain of water molecules and this allows the water to actually move up the xylem via the transpirational pull now adhesion allows the water molecules to move up the xylem against the force of gravity 
So cohesion is when water molecules stick to other water molecules and that forms a thread of water which moves up the xylem. Adhesion is when water molecules stick to non-water molecules as in let's take the xylem right here and you have a water molecule. When this water molecule tries sticking to the xylem cell wall or the xylem ends, they basically um, allow it to move the water up the xylem. So adhesion is when water sticks onto non-water molecules and allows it to move up the xylem, thus transporting it. Now uptake of mineral salts. Salts can be taken from the soil even when their concentration is low. So it's not necessary. Uh, it's not necessary that by uh, you know default the salt will move from high concentration to low concentration. Salt can still be taken up if its concentration in the soil is lesser than it is in the cell. So anything that disrupts the process of respiration will disrupt the process of taking up salts. Salts are taken up by active transport very important uh, this goes against the concentration gradient as it is the movement of molecules from an area of lower concentration to higher concentration that uses energy from respiration this energy from respiration is called atp adenosine triphosphate and this energy is what allows it to go against the concentration gradient thus move from low concentration to high concentration. How does active transport occur? So this structure that you see over here is the carrier protein. The carrier protein binds with a substrate molecule or with any molecule. This is your ion, let's say your salt ion. The carrier protein binds with a salt ion and uses energy from respiration to change its shape, thus allowing the salt to move into the cell. So this uses energy from respiration to change its shape so that it can close over here and open over here so that it can allow the ion to actually move into the cell. Right, that will be all for today's lesson. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, share and subscribe. And give me any suggestions for upcoming videos if you want. I can do videos on DNA or replication, etc. Just leave them in the comment section below and I will see you next time. Bye.